Okay, let's talk about the SAT and the ACT math sections. And I want to discuss uh, uh, quickly here why many students don't do well. Okay, so here I have some uh, scores on these respective tests, and these are, you know, not the greatest scores. And uh, SAT and ACT right now is going through a lot of changes. There's colleges that are not uh, kind of going away from them. Um, you know, some of these tests have been put on hold. Uh, but here's the bottom line. Whether it's the SAT or ACT, you're going to be taking some sort of placement exam. Okay, so I'm going to be talking specifically about the SAT and ACT. But what I'm going to be discussing here um, could apply to any math uh, placement test. Okay, so I want to stick around. I just want to um, highlight uh, some things that I've learned over uh, decades of helping people with the SAT and the ACT. And hopefully this resonates for you. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are uh, preparing for either the SAT or the ACT because these tests are definitely still being used. So we're going to get into this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. I have all the big courses in middle and high school mathematics. Uh, I have a lot of test preparation courses as well. So specifically, I offer uh, SAT and ACT uh, math prep courses. But if you're studying for the GED, teacher certification, uh, maybe graduate school, GRE, GMAT, or CLEP exam, Alex, Accuplace, or I can help you uh, with those exams as well. I have a big course catalog. You can check that out on my website, which you can find uh, the link to in the description of this video. I also work with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you're homeschooling and studying for the SAT and ACT, I can help you out, have a great homeschool learning system. And then if you're just a a uh, high school student, for example, taking out or two, it can certainly help you out. But one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out is taking great math notes over decades of teaching math. One thing's clear to me, those students who take great math notes do great in mathematics. And the reverse is true. Those students who just kind of wing it and don't write anything down, they get themselves in trouble. So don't do that, okay? You start improving your uh, on your notes. That's going to help you tremendously. Just believe uh, that when I say it. Now, in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry, and you can find the link to those uh, notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into the SAT and ACT, and I'm not going to talk about uh, the uh, differences, and there are differences uh, between these um, exams, okay? But effectively, all right, both the SAT and ACT, you're going to need to know um, about this level of math. You're going to need to know up to, say, Algebra 2 and high school geometry, okay? So that's kind of the, the bulk of what you need to know. I would even say um, years ago, you can kind of do pretty well with Algebra 1 and geometry, and most students take Algebra 1 at the ninth grade level. Uh, algebra 2 would be more, say, possibly for a lot of students at the 11th grade level, but you definitely need geometry, okay? So some of you out there um, uh, may have taken this course uh, track, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry. That's definitely not recommended because you're taking geometry, let's say, in your junior year, and then you're taking these placement tests. The SAT and ACT, you really start taking them, uh, the actual test, typically for most students in their junior year and definitely in their senior year to get ready for the college applications. But you can even take the PSAT, which is the practice SAT and ACT, oh, by the way, which I uh, um, offer as well, PSAT prep. And there's another test out there. But basically, here's the thing. This is, you know, um, you know, What's on these tests is a considerable amount of what you're going to be learning in high school mathematics. So um, now, is there uh, calculus or pre-calculus? No, not really. Okay, there's some, um, you know, advanced math. But if you know, if you're very strong in Algebra 2, up to Algebra 2 and Geometry, um, you know, that's kind of like the prerequisite level of mathematics, okay, for both of these tests. So if you're like, oh, I'm trying to, you know, uh, you know, not do as much, you know, geometry. Yeah, you're not going to be able to escape that. Now, the ACT and the SAT, in terms of their uh, test format and uh, style of questioning, there is some differences there. And I would say, roughly speaking, a lot of people think the 
uh, the math on the ACT is a little bit more direct, kind of like what they're used to with their high school math questions, where the SAT can be uh, quite challenging. And no doubt about it, uh, these tests, there are challenging tests, okay? And there's a lot of good students who, you know, get average scores, but they're very, very important tests. And again, whether it's the ACT or SAT, and if these tests go away, there's some, be something else that'll come along, okay? And you also have college placement exams as well. So I want to get into one of the major reasons why students end up with kind of average scores, right? So let's get into that now. All right, so how do you do well on the SAT or ACT? Well, it's kind of part science and part art form, and, and, and some students are... Uh, just naturally better test takers than, than others. And, and a lot of these tests are designed to uh, not be like, let's say, a high school uh, chapter test or something like that, high school math course chapter test. But here's the thing. I would say there's three elements to do well on these uh, exams, all right? So the first is, and I'm going to get into the, my main point of this video, but the first is you got to have uh, done well. you got to have done well in your math courses, okay? So you got to take the right math courses. You got to done well. So if you're taking basic math and whatnot, and you go sign up for SAT or ACT, you know that's you're not prepared, right? So, but you got to not only been in the right math courses, you got to have done well, right? The second thing is you got to really understand uh, the test format. Okay, so the test format of each of these tests, like the flavor of tests, or the the way the questions are being asked. Okay, and you got to like get used to those type of questions. You got to practice, practice, practice. And then the last uh, thing in terms of the, the test is I would say time management. Okay, uh, time and kind of tactics. All right. So as a former military person myself, you got to have a plan. You got to have a strategy. And there are definite tactics and time management approaches that you, this is a very, you know, these tests are very um, they're huge events in, in, in students' lives, right? You got to have a game plan, okay? You just can't go into it and be like, all right, I'm just going to do as many, you know, questions as I can, all right? So you got to have a plan. You got to have some tactics. And there are some tactics, you know, like should you guess, should you skip, you know, do the test penalize? You need to be very, very familiar with that. And then in terms of test format, you got to just practice. Get yourself uh, big practice books, take a lot of practice tests, uh, you know, all that's got to be, you know, uh, in the mix. But a lot of students will get themselves a test book, okay? Uh, there's tons of different uh, practice tests out there. And then they'll start reading up on uh, t uh, time and tactics and test format. And they'll, they'll put a lot of heavy emphasis on this. And then here, they're like, well, I did take um, Algebra 1 and Geometry, and I'm in Algebra 2, and I mean, everything seems to be going okay. This is what I want to talk about right here. Okay, this is what I want to talk about. Now, I've uh, you know taught mathematics for decades. I've also did a lot of tutoring uh, in the areas of SAT and ACT with a lot of successful uh, students. And uh, some people will say, well, you know, those people who can afford tutors are naturally going to get better. But you know, that's kind of a separate discussion. What I'm saying is, I've been uh, you know, around these tests for, for decades, and I've seen the changes in them, okay? And one thing that's been kind of clear to me, apparent, it's kind of like my statement on note-taking, is that students don't have uh, a strong enough, a strong foundation of mathematics as they think they do, all right? In other words, they don't, they don't really have those math skills uh, in their embedded in their long-term memory okay so in algebra one for example there's a ton of different things you need to like really master out of algebra one like solving equations uh, systems um, quadratic equations rational equations there's a huge amount of stuff and then in geometry there's a ton of stuff to, as well just because you take a math course does not mean that it's all gone gone, <laughs> gone into your long-term retention so how can you help yourself out? Well, that's when I talk about you got to take notes, right? You got to really when you when you're studying mathematics, okay, try to you know, if you can, think beyond just taking this math class, getting a grade and moving on with your life. Try to learn it for the long run, 
Okay, because if you if you can get most uh, a lot of these skills and concepts into into your longer term memory, you're going to be better off on the SAT and ACT. And so what I've seen is a lot of students uh, make the mistake of they think that a good grade is is kind of like equivalent to them just in, you know being able to remember this stuff. They'll know how to like do well in their class, but then they don't they don't hold on to the notes. They don't review. They don't have a more of a strategic long-term plan uh, for mathematics. I know that's kind of a, you know, in high school, some of you are just distracted. You're busy. you got a lot of other courses. And <laughs> when I was in high school, if someone was telling me this, I'd have this expression. I'd be like, hmm, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm not even into that. And I wasn't into that. I was into, you know, doing whatever. And then I went off in the, in the Marine Corps at uh, 17 years old, and that was a uh, wake-up call indeed. But, you know, if you're watching this video and you're, you know, planning on, you want to do well in the SAT or ACT, you know, and your eyes kind of drew you to this uh, video, and then then this is good because you have this as a goal. You're like, hey, I want to get into this particular college. You're like, I want to get into this school. This school requires, you know, like really, really good SAT or ACT score, so now you're motivated, all right? So if you're motivated, then you gotta reverse engineer this, and the one thing that you can do to really, really help yourself, okay, where a lot of students make mistakes, is to double down on how well you're doing in your math courses. Just don't go for great chapter grades. That's important in terms of your GPA, but learn to retain, learn to learn, learn to comprehend, and hopefully you got a great teacher that, you know, is motivating you to like the subject. But, you know, this is a process, and it's a hard process. That's why note-taking is so important. Keep your math notes. Definitely keep your math notes at the end of your classes. Okay, you can go back and review. So, you know, depending on what your what course you're in or what grade level, whether it's Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, take notes, keep your notes. At the end of the school year, don't throw those things away right? And review. Do a little light review. If you want to be exceptional, you got to do the things that other students won't do, okay? Now, if you need to, if you're struggling, all right, with the SAT and you're not sure that you really have, you know, all those foundational skills down, if you forgot, oh, I forgot systems, I forgot uh, quadratic equations, oh yeah, I remember learning that, but I don't remember it now, that's not going to you know, cut it. So like a, uh, a course like mine, uh, I believe my SAT and the ACT math prep courses have 25 chapters. I mean, it's a crazy amount of material. Now, obviously, you're not going to go back and relearn all those chapters, okay? But there's cha all chapters from Algebra 1, Algebra 2, you know, advanced, uh, you know, geometry, all this stuff is, is in there for you to relearn. But I think a lot of students just assume that just because they've taken these courses, I took Algebra 1, I took Geometry, Algebra 2, they, they do just a kind of a light review. This has been the biggest mistake I've seen for people in terms of the SAT and the ACT. Okay, they they uh, they just perceive, and I think it's natural you know, to do that as well. Like, I took the courses, so therefore I must remember. No, not, not the case at all. You're going to have to do a lot of review and a lot of, you know, extra work to keep up those skills. Okay, but this is the foundation to doing well in the SAT and ACT math. But these other uh, components uh, are are critical as well. Okay, you got to understand the test format, and you got to understand how to you know use your math skills, which you have over here, and apply them in on, on various test type of questions. And the more type of questions you can do, or the more practice tests you can do, just naturally you're going to get better. That's a lot of hard work, and you need as much time as possible. And then lastly. You need some tactics, okay? You need to know, like, hmm, should I skip? Should I do this? What, where should I put my time? You know, you got to have a plan. This is a huge uh, uh, test for for students. And, you know, those students, I mean, of course, there's some colleges and universities, even top colleges and universities that are getting away from the SAT and ACT. And that's their, uh, of course, their um, decision. And they have their reasons, and that's fine as well. But in general, whether it is the SAT or ACT or something else, and when it comes to mathematics placement exams or aptitude uh, test, this kind of what I'm telling you is kind of universal advice. It goes beyond on that, uh, um, uh, beyond just the SAT or ACT. But 
don't, you know, don't get it wrong as well. There's still a lot of colleges and universities are still using SAT and ACT. I personally don't think it's going away. Okay. So, um, I mean, I think that it's still be used. Uh, uh, there'll still be wide use of the SAT and ACT and some of the colleges that you might be interested in very, 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 may very well be asking for your SAT or ACT scores. I think some of the schools are leaving it kind of optional. You can take this and submit it, but it's not necessarily a requirement. So that's another way of looking at it. But it, let's let's just say, hey, if you got impressive SAT or ACT uh, scores, hey, you want to show those off, right? It takes time. This thing, this is not just one thing you can kind of pull together real quick. And, you know, but if you are watching this video and you're in your uh, freshman year in high school or whatnot, then you, you know, you could really you know, build yourself up to do very, very well. Okay. But the key is, you know, what I want to really um, emphasize where I think a lot of students make mistakes is they equate taking a math course with knowing, remembering what they learned in that math course. All right. That's not the case at all. You're going to have to do a lot of review and make a lot of effort to really retain that. And it's just a constant process. All right. Okay. So hopefully this is some you know, um, advice that you're like, all right, yeah, I kind of knew that, but I'm, you know, for me, look, I'm a math teacher. I've been doing this for decades, right? I've, I've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of students. I'm trying to really kind of if, give you my best guidance. Okay. And I think if you worked on those foundational math skills and those particular courses, you're just going to, you're just going to, you know, have better skills to apply to figure prompts out. Okay. But again, obviously if you're weak, in, in algebra and geometry, then you're really just going to be kind of like guessing and you, you know, end up with scores like this and you don't want to do that. Okay. You want to end up with scores that are, you know, um, in alignment with your potential and everyone can do far, far better in math than they think they can, but it does require this good old fashioned word called work. Okay. You're going to have to put some effort into it, but the more you work at it, the better your scores are going to be. And, um, We'll leave it at that. So if this video in some ways, you know, motivates you to kind of learn math, hey, I would definitely encourage you to check out my SAT and ACT math prep courses. Again, you can find the links to, uh, to my website. And then uh, once you go to my site, you can just check out uh, those particular courses. But it's a tremendous amount of information, really super high quality stuff. I think you'll be really impressed with that. But um, anyways, if you enjoyed this video or liked it in some manner, please consider smashing that like button. Uh, also, if you're uh, new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great place for someone like myself. I have hundreds of videos, hundreds and hundreds of videos already on my channel that can help you prepare for the SAT and ACT math. But you definitely want to check out my um, formal uh, math prep courses. Just that's where my best work is going to be. Again, you can find the links to those in the description of this video. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best uh, on the SAT or ACT or whatever test you might be uh, taking or whatever other math adventures come your way. And uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.